Hey everyone, welcome back to another web hosting video tutorial. I recently came across an issue where I needed to change the default key pair, SSH key pair, the public and private key that gets set up when you create a LightCell instance. Um, if you don't know, SSH key pairs are used in place of username and passwords. This is a public key and a private key combination set of security credentials which is considered more secure than using a plain username and password to log into your server to perform various tasks. Um, uh, by default, when you create a LightCell instance, LightCell provisions a public key and a private key that is default for, an, for the region that you're setting up your instance in. When you do create a new instance, you do have the option to create your own SSH key pair, but if you don't, then the default key gets installed for your server. Now, if you have given that key pair to um, someone else to log into your server, or if there is any other reason that you need to replace that key, then you need to perform some steps. And that's what I wanted to show you today and walk you through that tutorial. So without further ado, let's get started. I show you how to replace SSH key pairs for an existing LightCell instance, let me show you what options you have when you are creating an instance. So on the Create an Instance page, um, after you've selected the platform and blueprint, you'll have a couple of optional settings here. One of those settings is the changing an SSH key pair. So by default, LightCell will use a default SSH key pair that is unique to your account for uh, setting up your LightCell instance. This default key pair can be found in your account page. So if you click on account, go to SSH keys, and you'll see here that there are default keys for each AWS region. And these keys are unique to your account. So there is, in a key pair, there is a public key and a private key. The public key is installed on the server. So whenever you create a new instance in Virginia, the default public key will be installed there. And then the private key is available to you to download via this download link here that you install on your computer. And then you can use an SSH client like Bitvise, which is the one I use on Windows, or Putty, or any other SSH client you can use that key to log into your server to perform operational activities on your server. The other way you would use these keys is to SFTP into the server for uploading or downloading files. And uh, you know, programs like FileZilla support SFTP. So once you've downloaded your private key, you would configure your SFTP or your SSH client uh, using that private key and log into your server you would not use a username and password. Um, so when you are setting up your new instance, you have the option to leave this as is, and then that default key pair is used in, an, in setting up your instance, or you can change this key pair right here. So if you click on change SSH key pair, you have options of uploading your any existing public key that you have that you want to use for this uh, server or you can create a new one. So when you create a new one, you have the option of creating a public and private key. And you'll give the key pair a name and you'll have the option to download the private key and that the public key is installed on your new instance. But if you don't do anything, the default key is used. Now, why would you want to replace or what when would you need to replace the SSH key pair that was initially used to set up your server? The one reason that I've come across is if you've given your private key to a perhaps a developer or someone else that needed to access your server for any reason, then they have the private key and then your server has a public key. And if you no longer are working with that person or they're not working with you, then they still have a private key that they can use to log into your server. So what would you need to do is replace that public key that's on your server with another public key so that 
the private key that's been given to other people is basically invalid at that point. So that's what I want to show you here. So let's go ahead and create a brand new instance. I'll leave the default key and we'll just set up a WordPress instance for this tutorial. Okay, so our instance is created. Now, if I wanted to log into this instance via SSH or SFTP, I would need to download the default key. So go back to your account, click on SSH keys, and then for the region, which is Virginia, download the private key. So go ahead and download that. And you have the private key uh, on your computer now. And then use a tool like Bitwise SSH client or PuTTY and log into your server. So what you would do is get the IP address of the server inside Bitwise, the username for WordPress instance in the light cell uh, image is Bitnami. So that's your username. And then you're logging in with a private key. So in Bitnami or in Bitvise SSH client, there's a client key manager. You would click on that and then you would import the key that we just downloaded. And that's here. And then you click on import. And I've already installed it uh, on this Bitvise tool, so it's going to tell me that it's a duplicate. But your private key is installed here, and when you log in, it's going to verify the private key with the public key on the server. And as long as those two match, you are able to log into the server. So I will hit login. And as you can see, Bitvise opened up the SFTP, where now I can um, upload files into WordPress or download files back to my computer or I have the SSH terminal and I can perform any tasks that I want on my server. Now as I mentioned the one of the primary reasons to change now this public and private key setup is if you've given this private key that you we've just downloaded if you've given that to someone else to log in to your server and now that person is no longer working with you, you need to change the private public key pair. Otherwise they can still log into your server just like we just did. So the very first thing we have to do is create a brand new key pair. So to create a new SSH key pair, go over to account, click on SSH keys, and then click on create new. Make sure that the region um, is the same that you have your instances instance in and that's virginia for me click on create give it a name my new key pair click on generate and now you have the opportunity to download the private key so this is the only time you can download it so click on download and it will be in, saved on your local computer the public key is stored in your account and you can use this new key pair to create brand new instances but to replace it on an existing instance lightcell is not going to change the public key that's already on your existing server so to do that we will need to generate a public key and install that so open up on windows i'm going to open up uh, powershell command prompt um, if you're on Mac, you can open up the terminal, or if you're on Linux, you can also open up a terminal. So <clears throat> open the Windows command prompt, or in my scenario here, I have the Windows PowerShell command prompt. And as I mentioned, if you're on a Mac or Linux, you can just open up the terminal window. We'll go to the downloads folder. This is where I have downloaded the new private key that I just uh, generated and then I'm going to run the command ssh keygen with a dash y and a dash f as parameters and then the private key file so my new key pair dot pem and then we will create a give it a right air, um, right arrow I guess um, and create the public key for this private key. So my new key pair dot pub is the extension typically given to public keys and then hit enter. So now if we look inside the downloads folder, this is a little 
bit harder, but let's open up the uh, Windows Explorer. So you'll see here we have the public key pair that we just created. So let's go ahead and open that file. And you'll see here, this is the, the public key. We need to put this public key onto our light cell instance. So go over to our light cell instance, um, SSH uh, window that I have open, SSH uh, terminal for my server. We'll go into a um, hidden folder called S dot SSH, so CD dot SSH. This is the a folder where the authorized keys file is stored, where all the public keys are stored for your server, for this user. So it's in your home, uh, let me just show you, in the home Bitnami location, there should be a .ssh hidden folder. And then inside here, there should be um, a single file called authorized underscore keys. And if we open this, file in our uh, VI editor or whichever editor you're comfortable with. Open this file. You'll see that there's a public key. So this is the default public key for my account. And we'll need to add this public key to this file. So go to the end of the file. I hit shift dollar sign or shift four, which is the dollar sign to take my cursor to the end of the line. And then A for going into insert mode, hit enter, copy this public key from your computer and we'll paste it into this file. So shift insert, we'll paste it. And then you can hit escape to exit out of the insert mode and then colon WQ to write the file. So now the public key for our new key pair is installed on the server. What we will do next is I will exit out of this instance completely from my Bitwise SSH client. So I'll log out completely. And now we can try to log in with the newly created private key, right? So I'll go back to my key manager here and we will import that uh, private key right here, my new key pair dot PEM for, this is your private key, open that and uh, let's go ahead and import. So now we have this one right here and it, the location is called global three. This is something I guess specific to um, how Bitwise uh, manages the keys, but global three is the new key that I just imported. So we will log into our server again using that global three key. So this is my new private key. Now, if I've pasted the public key correctly, this should let me in. So hit login and we are in, as you can see. So with the newly created public and private key, we are able to log into our server. Now that that's working, the next thing that we need to do is remove the default public key because again, we don't want that private public key that was originally used to set up the server to work anymore, right? So we will go back into the um, authorized underscore keys file. So .ssh, cd into this folder, and then vi authorized dot underscore keys. And uh, we will delete this first key pair line. You'll see that it, in, in my window, this is spanning uh, almost five lines. Uh, but in reality, this is all on one line. It's just the width of my window is causing it to show. Now, if, if I expand it, you'll see that it's um, three lines now. But we will go to the beginning of this line. So to do that, you hit Shift-6. And my cursor now is at the beginning of the line. And then to delete this line, just hit the D key twice. So DD, and now the public key, the default public key is removed. We will escape colon WQ, 
and that will write the file. Now, if anybody else has your original private key, they can no longer connect to the server. And we'll test that with our Bitwise SSH client. Um, again, in my client key manager, the old um, key is the, um, the default key for my region. Global one is what's assigned to it in the Bitwise key management console. So I will go to global one and try to log into the server again. So I'll log out and then with global one, try to log in. And as you can see, it's not working. It's asking me for uh, a different key to be chosen. And if I pick global three, which is the new key, it should let me in. So our changes have worked. The private key that was originally used to set up this instance will no longer work. And now you have a public private key pair that's only secure for you um, for this server. All right, so I hope you found this video tutorial useful. Please give it a thumbs up. If you run into any issues or have any questions, please note them in the comments below. If you like these type of tutorials, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and notifications as well, and share this with others who may find it useful as well. And until the next video tutorial, take care. Mm -hmm.